Hey, what is going on everybody? In the last video, what we did was set up part of our portrait layout and it looked like this. A little rough, not gonna lie, but by the end of this video, our portrait layout's gonna look like this, something significantly better. So let's get started. So at the end of the last video, I had you guys do two challenges, to change the text of each of the buttons by referencing the string resource file and creating three new backgrounds for our clear button, this one right here, the equals button, and the four buttons that perform our math operations. So to start off this video, let's just go ahead, get those out of the way in case you were wondering how to do those. At the end of the last video, I pasted in all these strings here and I uploaded them to GitHub so you didn't have to type them all out. But let's go ahead and apply each of these strings to their corresponding button. So how can we do that? Well, you're gonna have to come over and open your activitymain.xml file and you're gonna have to view the XML code. If you don't remember how you can do that, come over to the far right towards the top. There should be three buttons, code, split, and design. You wanna click the split button or you can click the code button, but I usually go with split so you can see the design along with the XML. But once you click one of those buttons so you can see the code, all you have to do is come in here and find one of your buttons. If you click the tag and come over to your design, you can see which button you're gonna be modifying. So in our case, it's gonna be the clear button. So if I come over to this button tag in the XML, I look for the text attribute right here. And within this string, what I'm gonna do is type in at string forward slash whatever name I gave my clear text string. So this big C right here has a name of clear text. I can copy this, come over here, not hashtag at string forward slash the clear text. And then if we come over to our design, you can see that the text changed to a letter C, which was placed in between our string tags here, this guy. And if we come back over, you can see the C's here and we no longer have a warning from Android Studio. So what I'm gonna do is change the text for the rest of our buttons and then I'll be back. All right, so I got that done. And if we take a look at our design, you can see all the text has been applied to each button except for our delete button. Now there are a few changes we're gonna need to apply to our delete button. So go ahead, back in your XML and find the delete button tag. So in my case, it's all the way at the bottom. So if you click it, take a look at the design, you can see the delete button is highlighted. So I know this is the correct tag. The first thing we're gonna have to do is change this button tag to an image button. So type in image button hit enter. And then the next thing I know Android Studio is gonna want us to add in is a content description. But if you think about it, since we're gonna be overlaying an image onto our button, we're not gonna need any text. So let's just replace our text argument here with a content description. And then we're gonna come back over to our strings.xml and then let's define a content description for our backspace button. So I'm gonna type in string to use the string tag. I'm gonna call it backspace. And then I'm just gonna make it an empty string. So let's come back over to the activity main.xml, find your image button. And then within our content description, we're gonna type in at string forward slash, whatever you named your backspace string. And then if we come over to our design, you can see we can no longer see our delete button. So let's fix that. We could come over to the far left, come down to our resources folder. In the drawable folder, we're gonna create a new drawable resource for our backspace button. So right click on drawable, hover over new, and then create a new drawable resource file. This new window should pop up and then I'm just gonna name it backspace and then leave everything else as the default and then click okay. And then we should be presented with a new XML file. Within here, all we're gonna do is create a new item. And then this item tag is gonna have an argument of drawable. So we'll type in drawable. And then we're looking for the at Android drawable forward slash IC underscore input delete. So hit enter. And if we take a look at the preview, you can see we have this nice backspace image. So let's add in two more arguments, the width and height of this image. So we could type in Android colon width, and we're just gonna give it a value of 40 DP. And then I'm gonna copy this line, change it from width to height, and then keep it as 40 DP again and close off this tag. So now that we have this new drawable resource file, we can come back over to the activity main.xml and apply that image to our backspace button. So how do we do this? We could come down at the very end of our arguments, type in app colon src compat, C-O-M-P-A-T, and then set that equal to our at drawable forward slash backspace. And then if we come back over to our design, you can see we have our backspace image applied to the backspace button. Now, looking at our backspace button, I'm sure you noticed it's a little bit too small. So let's come back over to the XML and let's change the width and height for our backspace button. 
Now, if you remember, on our backspace button, we gave it constraints to the left of the button below it and the right of the button below it. So it's gonna act just like our zero button here. So what we're gonna need to do is set the width of our image button, the backspace button, to zero. So it spans or matches the constraints that are applied to it. So if we come back over, you can see already the delete button is looking much better because it's just gonna take the width of our divide button below it. And then the next thing we're gonna have to do is define a height so let's define a height of 45 dp. I think that looks pretty good. And then if we come back over, you can see our backspace button looks significantly better than when we first changed it to an image button. So what I'd like to do now is change the size of the rest of our buttons. So let's scroll up to the top of the constraint layout that's holding all of our buttons. Let's come to the first button tag here and let's define a width and a height for it. I'm gonna give it a width of 80 dp and a height of 70 dp. So I think that looks pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and apply that to the rest of the button, so I'll be back. All right, so now that I went ahead and applied a width and a height for all of our buttons, I do wanna point out one thing. Make sure you don't change the width of the zero button to 80 dp. You wanna make sure to keep that as zero dp because if you remember, we gave it a constraint to the left of our two buttons that are above it and we want it to span the entire width of it. If we take the zero button and set it to an 80 dp, you see it'll no longer match the width of both of the buttons above it. So make sure to keep that at zero dp. All right, so now that we have that done, there's a few more things that I'd like to change about our buttons. And to start off, let's change the text size because it's a little bit too small. So in order for us to change the text size, we're gonna need to add in another argument, type in Android text size, and then I'm gonna give it a text size of 28 SP. Make sure you're using SP and not DP because Android Studio wants us to use SP for text. And then if we come back over to our design, you can see the text is much more legible for our clear button. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply a new text size for all of our buttons, and then I'll be back. All right, so I got all the text sizes changed for each of our buttons. So let's take a look and you can see the buttons are much more legible. So there's only a few more things left to do before we're done with our portrait layout. And that is making sure the buttons aren't butted up against each other, creating the three new backgrounds for our clear equals and math operator buttons. And we need to fix up the edit text. So let's go ahead and create the three new backgrounds because I think that'll just be a little bit more fun. So let's come back over to the far left in our resources folder, come down to the drawable folder. Again, right click on it create a new drawable resource. And then the first background that I'd like to create is the clear button background. So I'm just gonna call it clear underscore button background. Come down, click okay, and then we should have a new XML file. And then with it here, what we're gonna do is add in a new item. This item is gonna be a shape. And this shape is gonna have a shape argument to define the shape type. So we're gonna define it as a rectangle. And within here, we're gonna define a background for a rectangle, so type in solid. And we're gonna define a color for the solid. And if you remember, our clear button is gonna be red, so if we type in at color, forward slash, the red background, we already defined that color in our colors resource file. Close off the solid tag, and then let's add in a stroke. So we can type in stroke, and then we can define a color for the stroke. And again, we already have a color defined for this, so type in at color forward slash red accent. And we're gonna give it a width of 1.5 dp. Close off this tag, and we're gonna add in one more tag into our shape, and that's the corners tag to round off the rectangle corners. And all we have to do is define a radius for this, and I'm gonna give it a radius of 25 dp. So let's come over to the preview, and you can see we have this nice contrasting background with the accent color, and all we have to do is apply this to our clear button. So let's come back over to the activity main.xml file, click our clear button in the design, and it should show us where that button tag is in the XML. And all we have to do is change the background from button background to the clear button background that we just created, come back over to the design preview, and we can see that our button background changed to that nice red. So all we have to do now is create two more resource files, a purple one and a green one for the rest of the buttons. So let's go ahead and do that. Right click on the drawable folder, new, drawable resource file, and let's create the equals button background. So I'm gonna call it equals underscore button background. Hit enter, and then I'm gonna come over to the clear button background, copy and paste whatever's in here, come over to the equals button background, and paste that all in. So we should have a copy of the clear button background, and all we have to do is change the accent colors. So our equals button should be that green background, and then we should change the red accent to the green accent. 
So if we take a look at the preview, you can see we have the green button created. And now let's come back over to the drawable folder again, right click on it, hover over new, drawable resource file, and let's create the arithmetic button background. So I'm gonna call it arithmetic underscore button background. Hit okay. And again, we're just gonna paste whatever we had in our clear button background. And all we have to do is change the colors. So change it from the red background to the purple background and then the red accent to the purple accent color. And if we take a look at the preview, you can see we have a nice purple button background. So now the last thing we have to do with these backgrounds is actually apply them to the button. So come back over to the activity main.xml file, locate the button tags that you wanna change. So let's start off with the arithmetic buttons. So I'm gonna click the divide button over in the design, and it should tell me where it is in the XML folder by highlighting the corresponding tag. Once we determine what tag we need to change, come down to the button background, and again, change this to arithmetic button. And if we take a look at the preview, we have a nice purple button background. I'm gonna go ahead and apply this to the rest of the buttons, so I'll be back. Now that I got all the backgrounds applied to our buttons, if we take a look at the design, it looks so much better than what we had at the start of this video. Now, the last thing we have to do is add in a margin to all of our buttons so they're not like smushed together. Now, what is a margin? A margin is like white space that's gonna be applied to the outside of a view. In our case, it's gonna be for our buttons. So if we take a look at our design, click on the clear button, it should show you where that tag is in the XML, and what we're gonna do is add in a margin top. So if you come down here, type in Android layout margin top, and then we're gonna give this a value of 10 DP. And let's take a look at what just happened. If we take a look at the design, you could see our clear button is a little bit below our parentheses and the divide button. You'll notice that these are flush with the delete button bottom, but this one is shifted 10 dp below it. That's because it added white space to the top of our clear button. So what we're gonna have to do is apply a margin top to all of our buttons, and for a few of them, we're gonna have to apply a margin start. Now, which buttons are gonna get a margin start? They're gonna be all the buttons that aren't the clear seven, four, one, and zero. So the rest of the buttons here, I'll click them all for you. So all these buttons get a margin start. Now, what is the margin start gonna do for us? So let's click the open parentheses button, take a look at that tag in the XML, and let's first apply the margin top. So if we apply a margin top, give it a value of 10 dp, let's take a look at the design and you can see again, this is gonna be 10 dp below the backspace button. Now if we apply a margin start to this, and give that a value of 10 dp, you'll notice that it's not butted up against the clear button anymore. There's extra white space at the start of the view. So what we need to do is apply a margin start to every button except for the clear, seven, four, one, and zero buttons. These buttons only get a margin top, while the rest of them will get a margin top and a margin zero. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and apply a margin to the rest of the buttons, and then I'll be back. All right, so now that I have the margin applied to all of our buttons, they're looking really good, I think. Now, the last thing we have to do for our portrait layout is mess around with the edit text and the text view. This shouldn't take too long, but let's go ahead in your XML, find the edit text tag. You could do that by coming over to our design, clicking on it, and it should snap to wherever that tag is in your XML. And you'll see that we have a few warnings associated with our edit text. The first one is that it doesn't have autofill hints. Now, we don't want this because we're not gonna have the default keyboard appear for the user. We want them to use the buttons that we created. So what we can do is come down here just below the last Android argument and type in Android colon important for autofill and set that equal to no. Now, I, I really thought this was weird that you'd set it to no. It is in the documentation just for proof. All we have to do is type in Android important for autofill and it's just no. So once you do that, we should have one more warning to fix and that's this text. Now this text argument is gonna be a little bit different than for our buttons. When the user clicks on this edit text field here, this name string is already gonna be applied to it by default. We want that to go away when the user actually clicks on it. So what we need to change the text attribute to is hint. And then all we have to do is reference a string in our strings.xml file, but I don't believe we created one yet. So let's come back over to the strings.xml file. At the top of this, we could type in string to use the string tag, and we'll call it display hint. And then I'm just gonna type in enter a value. 
So this will be the display hint. So I'm going to copy this name, come back over to the activity main.xml. In our hint argument, type in at string forward slash display hint or whatever you happen to name that string. So then if we come over to our design, you can see that we have enter a value in there. I'm actually not sure if you could see that because it's black. So let's go ahead and change the hint color. We could do that by changing the text color hint by typing in at color forward slash, let's go with the gray accent color or not the green accent color, the gray accent color. So now if we come back over to our design, you can see that we can read enter a value much better than when it was just black. So let's bump up the text size a little bit. So we can type in Android text size. I'm gonna give it a value of 48 SP. I'm gonna change the height to wrap content and the width to match parent. And then if we take a look at our enter a value text, you'll notice that it's starting from the far left, but we want to start at the right. So what we can do is set a text alignment. So if we come into our arguments, we can type in Android colon text alignment and then we're going to align it to the text end. So now if we take a look at our design, you can see that enter our text snapped over to the far right. So now the last thing we have to do is make sure that it's not butted up against our delete button. So let's go ahead and add a margin bottom. So type in Android layout margin bottom, and I'm going to give it a value of 40 DP. And then let's make it so our enter a value isn't flush with the screen so we can add in padding. Now, what's the difference between padding and a margin? Well, the margin goes on the outside of a view while the padding applies to the inside of the view. So if you take a look, we could type in Android colon padding end. And if we give this a value of 10 DP, if you take a look at enter a value, watch that while I type in 10 DP, you'll notice that it shifts over a little bit. So I'll over exaggerate this. If we give it a value of like 50 DP, you can see that now it's towards the middle because there's white space in between the text and the end of the edit text. So let's change this back to 10 DP. And if we take a look at our warnings here, you could see that Android Studio wants us to define a padding start because it's not going to be symmetrical. So all we have to do is type in Android padding start and give it also a value of 10 DP. And then that warning should go away and we should be good for our edit text here. And then what we should do is fix our text view a little bit. So find that tag in our XML. And there's only two things we're going to do for this. We're going to change the text size to 24 SP. And then we're going to get rid of this text argument here because we're going to change the text in our text view when we're running some code. All right, so I think I'm going to end the video here. We got the whole design aspect of our portrait layout completed. Now in the next video, what we're going to be doing is actually programming. So if we click the eight button, an eight should pop up in our display. If we click the multiply button, we should have a multiplication symbol pop up in there. And I think we'll have enough time to actually import the MX parser library and actually start evaluating some equations. As always, if you guys have any questions or if you're just confused about something, leave a comment down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.